I really like the drums in this song. I think the drums hit really hard. I'm quite proud of them. I actually made the drums from scratch myself, like synthetically. Oh, this will be interesting because I actually did this kick in the project itself. So let's have a look. I really like this kick. I don't know if it's translating through the stream, but that's a nice kick. Yeah, that's a pretty nice kick, I reckon. What do you guys think? So how did I do this? There's a plugin called Kick2, which is really cool. It's by Sonic Academy. Here it is. It basically lets you create drum sounds, or specifically, it's best for kicks, but you can do all kinds of stuff in it. Um, and you can see that you can draw the envelope or the shape of the synthesized element. So like you've got this sub, sub bass wave layer, and then you can add like how you want the sub to move over time, like pitch wise and amplitude wise. And then you've got these three kick, click layers, which lets you add the texture on top. So it's basically like a dedicated plugin for building kick samples. Obviously I did a bunch after that. That's just coming straight out of the plugin. So I kind of made it sound a bit warmer. Like I EQ'd out some of the harshness, boosted a little bit of the lows. K clip is cool. Um, it kind of adds like very transparent distortion. So it's good for gain staging. Cause you can like, like you can see here, I'm clipping 2.5 decibels off the top of the kick. But you can't really tell, like it's not really that audible, but if you then group the kick with something else later, you're not going to get those extra 2.5 decibels of peaks messing with whatever compression you have going on. So it's kind of just keeps the kick as a neat package. Next overdrive, adding a little bit of crunch to the top end. And then another EQ just boosting where I thought it needed a bit of love. Really cool and punchy kick. Thank you so much. The snare is kind of another cool element of this song. So let's have a listen to that. Yeah, crispy as. Um, so you can see here, I've got like this group called snare clap and that is where I'm grouping together two layers. So we've got a snare layer, which I've completely made from scratch using operator and a bunch of processing, a lot of processing. And then there's this clap layer, which is called wavy clap one, because I made the clap myself using white noise in a previous time. And then I exported that as a sample. So this is a customized, like I made that sound myself and I just saved it as a sample. And you can see, and if I open up the delay time, you can see that the, the clap is coming 11 milliseconds before the snare. So you kind of get that like, like flam sound makes it a bit more crunchy. So this snare, like I said, I made this snare from scratch. Like I know a lot of people won't do this, but I like to make my drum sounds from scratch because it just like, firstly, I find it really fun. Secondly, I love the control that it gives me. And I just love sound design and like understanding the anatomy of sound kind of thing. And like a lot of the time, a song idea will start from a sonic concept. So I'll be like, oh, I wonder if I can make a snare sound like this using this technique or whatever it might be. It'll take me in a totally new direction, but like I end up creating a cool sound, which then becomes the basis of a song. That's not how this song in particular started, but that is a, a, a how a lot of my songs will start. And you can see I've got three layers of operator. This is an instrument rack. So basically means when you play a note, all three of these layers will sound at the same time. Each one of these layers is dedicated to a different section i guess you could say like a different part of the snare drum so we've got this layer is like the snare body the body of the snare so i'm using operator which is just ableton's like simple fm synth and i'm not even using the fm part i'm using one of the oscillators with like a sine wave or just a short like blip that's all it is that's like the body of the snare. So I've tuned it to be in the area of where a snare would be. You can see there it's tuned to 262 Hertz, which is kind of where most snare drums live. And then on top of that, we've got our noise layer. Now this is like the snappy part of the snare drum. Again, it's operator. This time we've got white noise and just a very short burst of sound. Oh, and I'm actually side chaining this to the body. So it kind of makes it like sucky sounding like so those are the two elements of the snare. By itself, those sounds don't really sound like a snare drum. Like, let's turn off this processing. That's what it sounds like without the processing. It's like very weak and not very like snare drum. Like it sounds very synthetic. 
So I had to do quite a lot to make it sit together. This is how I'm affecting the sound source, just accentuating where it needs to be accentuated and getting rid of what doesn't need to be there. A very heavy compressor, like really squashing it. That does quite a lot. Overdrive, that's doing a lot as well. Adding a lot of like natural grit, which makes it sound less like a synthesizer oscillator and more like a real life sound. Then we've got a saturator, same vibe. Then another EQ, because we've done all this distortion and compression, we need to EQ it again. A limiter, doing barely anything. A saturator again. So this is set to digital clip mode, which is kind of like what K-Clip was doing before. It's really just like topping off the peaks. A utility, this is boosting the level, but it's also pulling out, because I think the noise layer in the, in the sound design was stereo and it was too wide, so I kind of reduced the width a little bit by pulling the mid-side balance more towards the mids. Got another EQ here. And another EQ, this one's set to mid-side mode and it lets you, if you're working with a stereo sound source, you can EQ the center audio and the side audio separately. So the blue line is the middle and the yellow line is the sides. So you can see I'm like boosting some of the sides but cutting also some of the sides at the top and then where I've cut the sides out, I've boosted the middle a little bit and that's the snare sound but then we've also got going through this this group covers the snare and the clap layer as well so you can hear them together and that's going through like yeah compressor saturator eq another k clip oh and then a lovely room reverb from valhalla love valhalla room again because all these are these are all synthetic sources like they're all digitally created using digital oscillators. So I wanted it to sound more natural. So I threw like, I wanted to make it sit in a space. Valhalla Room's really good at that. And that's the snare. EQ looks like a fat man sleeping on his back. Yeah, it's a portrait of myself. This is a, an, a hi-hat, literally just made of white noise in operator. I EQ'd all the low end, a little bit of shaping in the highs. Very highly resonant filter on it to give it like that metallic kind of peak. And it's just a basic electronic hi-hat sound. Um, I didn't really want to have a natural sounding hi-hat for this particular song. We've got a whoosh. I love these whoosh sounds. I use them all the time. Similar technique to what I did with the hi-hats and like how I would create like a shaker. So you've got like white noise coming out of an operator, but there's like an envelope on the filter and on the amplitude so that it kind of goes, it fades out from nothing. Kind of sounds like a karate chop, like Grain delay is giving it a little bit of like width and then there's just like some delay. Give it some space and width, make it sound nice and airy and windy. Bit of reverb. Bit of compression. Why not? Yeah, that's cool percussive element. I use that in a lot of songs coming up as well, so.